Mate, leave the pastries, we've got to move. Hello, senor. One of the best lamb shanks you'll ever have. God, blimey. <laughs> if I had to send anybody to one restaurant in Paris, it'd be here. Hey, I'm Jesse. Behind the camera is Will. Together, we're Top Jaw. We got up at crack o'clock this morning. Two hours later, here we are. Yes, bro. Not so romantic time for Will and Jess because we've got Chris with us. Senor Bleaksville, we might be in the city of love, but it is uh, grey. We are here for one day only. So we have made it our mission to feature 10 or so of the best places in Paris right now. I am so, so excited to be here again. Clock is ticking. Let's go. I can never get over the fact that you can just be in London, get on a train, and then in two hours you're in Paris. The first area of Paris we've come to is called Haute Marie. It is one of the coolest parts of town, full of boutiques, little windy streets, lovely spot to explore, and our first spot of the day. It was a 5 a.m. cockle for us this morning, so we want to kick things off with a powerful coffee. And for that, we've come to one of the coolest spots in town, the coffee. Brilliant name for SEO that, isn't it, Will? Flippin' egg. Beautifully elegant, everything is square. They're serving coffee like it's a brand new map, but Will. Carry on that tech theme. Order via tablet. I think they call it a true white here. True white. So I first came here in October when I was here, not for top drill, on one of those rare occasions where I go somewhere without Will filming me. <laughs> How's it, bro? Uh, uh, <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. You can never get blase about that. God, that is, that is gorgeous. The croissants are made here on site. Go with the classic French all butter number. Oh, look at that, man. You see that stretch? It's so good. I've actually never had a croissant with that goo before. That's brilliant. Oh, yes, baby. Get the chocolate in your snout. Oh, mate. It's got the right texture to it. Yeah. Well, I was in front of the camera. That is a, that is a top jaw first. Yeah. yeah, it's like when we're trying to present next to each other and I just go, oh, I absolutely stiffen up and I'm like... Mm. I don't really help you, do I? I just sort of take No, you really crush my confidence. <laughs> 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 Bye. One for the road, mate. They're also very well known for their frappuccinos. Their style. I see, because do you know what? Today I'm feeling like I need a nice drink. From probably the most contemporary joy you could ever come across to something far, far more traditional. All right. Can you come and hit? It's weird, eh? Oh, he's talking to himself. You mugging me off? I'm mugging you off. Can I check with you about ordering, please? Say something. I am. Down this little cobbled historic street is a place I've really been looking forward to taking you boys. The Jacobine. It is the most quintessential little French restaurant I think I've ever come across. And what makes the whole thing even better is the prices are super reasonable. Starter and main of incredibly high quality, well-cooked food for 27 euros, right in the center of Paris. Service in there is exquisite, and the patisserie section people come for alone. Love it, love the Jacobine. I'm really, really up for this. That was quick, mate. You're just taking your jacket off and the food's already <laughs> Any little thing you find in the garden can taste good if you put that much garlic butter on it. Right, snail that I just pulled out of the shell myself. <laughs> Do you taste the jardin? <laughs> taste the jar, 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 whatever. Uh -huh. French onion soup, look at that. With all the cheese on top. In the proper French onion soup vessel. God, that is so good. How long does it take Joss to absolutely obliterate a baguette? Three, two, one, go. And they're off. Fingers all intact currently. He's on the final straight, and we hit it at? Eight seconds. <laughs> oh yeah, look at that, mate. One of the best lamb shanks you'll ever have in your goddamn life. God, blimey. Delicately done, I love it, I love it. I reckon if someone said they're coming, coming to Paris, they're gonna eat in one restaurant. Why sell them here? In terms of like just the value and the Frenchness of the whole thing, I just think it's fantastic. The Paris, eh? You and me sharing a room. <laughs> we're not. We're not. We're not. We're not sharing a room. Never again. Not after Rome. Thanks for sharing us, the Jacqueline.
So guys, the hotel we're staying in tonight couldn't be more different than this one. Think of the polar opposite of this chic, cool hotel. How niche is it? It's hard to come to, I think. It's a bit of jeopardy. We've got one day to spend here and we've managed to spaff it on timings. Brilliant. It's not too far from the French bastards though, probably. Oh, it's annoying, we had so much time. <laughs> I didn't realise it closed off too. I was, I was saying it for the last yeah, two hours. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what we're now. He's, he's been digging me out about going. I think it is quite stressful hanging out with me. That's fair enough. Maybe we do a little how to find somewhere lit within five minutes using Google Maps. <laughs> Have you heard of Google Maps? It does smell warm. I don't know what I mean. Starts not the Hoxton. Budget, <laughs> budget's a little smaller than last year. <laughs> <sighs> Table, big old, big old room. I'm actually knackered already. So we're going to go and find a restaurant on the street and <laughs> sell it to you guys like we've been there and no goes about it. It's 2.12. The sun will come out tomorrow. Well, we all wanted a burger, shock, so we've sussed out the best place in town. PNY, and no, it does not stand for Pony, it stands for Paris, New York. Yes, burgers are a guilty treat. However, all the beef served in PNY is from a chap called Samuel, who rears some of the best black Angus and sailor cows in all of Europe. We've gone for two burgers. This is the return of the cowboy. In here you got onion ring, their steak hash, American cheese, barbecue sauce, all that good stuff. A lot of bacon as well. This one right here is the crispy. They're spinning a classic chicken burger. It's like you pick it up and you go, oh yeah, this is, they're not messed about with this. They're quite big as well. Does it pass a taste test well? Let's try it. Oh yeah. It looks freaking great. That's no, freaking awesome. So please we come here. If you're sat there thinking, God, they're going all the way to Paris and they're just eating an American style burger, correct. But all the meat's from Normandy, so how French is that, bro? And where's the beer from? Uh, Berkshire. And where are the buns from? Somerset. <laughs> Go on, Chris. Give me a beat. <laughs> No. The thing is, we're showing this list of everywhere that we think is great in Paris, but the truth is, even the standard boulangeries like this are superb. And you can't go wrong with them. But some are particularly exciting. We've come to the area called Folie Mericot for not one, but multiple French bastards. French bastards isn't your regular boulangerie. There are many of them in France. <laughs> France. For, for us. <laughs> for us. French Bastard is not your usual boulangerie. Julian, we're about to meet, started it. He lived in Australia for a couple of years and he was called the French Bastard by the chef that he was working with. He came back and he thought, do you know what? I want to do my own boulangerie, but I'm going to make it cool, young, contemporary, bake some of the old French classics with my twist and bring in some new things that I found around the world. Wow. You'd think the people of Paris might be like, no, this is not a true, this is not a real, heady boulangerie, but people love it. On a weekend, they serve 2,000 pastries. 2,000. I must try a pan suisse, because I love them. I haven't had one in Paris yet, and I've been here. You're literally so happy about that. Huh? You're so happy. I just love pan suisse, bro. This place is particularly known for its chocolate cruffin. Crustle Muffin Love Child, so we've gone for one of those as well. Yes, mate. You've been dreaming about one of these all day. I tried to drag you into a bakery earlier. <laughs> I tried to drag you into a bakery earlier because I wanted one of these. Pan Suisse. Just beautiful wraps of pastry around a currant and chocolate centre. More lamination than a GCSE project. Mm. I feel quite full. <laughs> this right here is caramel eclair. Oh boy. That looks up my street. Oh my god. Oh, oh my god. Oh, crikey, this thing is so good. There's just so much gooey stuff in the middle oh. of it. Would you like a oh. pot on the teller with a bit of croissant wrapped around it? Yes. Yes, I would. I'm in heaven. Well, do you fancy playing sword fights downstairs with some baguettes? Yes, mate. Okay. Julian, 
the original French bastard, and it's okay, he's allowed me to say that, called himself it. And we're watching him cooking some baguettes. See, uh, this is harder than it looks. Yeah. yeah. Be careful, huh? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's going in the bargain bucket tomorrow. <laughs> right, okay. So you sort of teased me with the first one that you did. <laughs> Into the morgue. My little kids have all grown up, Will. You scored them, mate. Oh, mate, that is the epitome of crunchy French bread. Thank you Great very to much. meet you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks for letting me handle your baguettes. That's normal. That's fantastic. The spread at 4 p.m. is insane. You don't have to come first thing in the morning to get that kind of service and that range. Great meeting, Julian. What a French bastard. You get away with it. Right, from one big black door to a little red door. Huh? <laughs> Surprise, surprise, it's called The Little Red Door. A beautiful little cocktail bar on a street full of little jewelry shops and boutiques, not somewhere where you think there'd be a bustling bar. This bar is the only bar in Paris to be on the world's 50 best bar list. You've heard of Farm to Fork cooking? Well, this place is Farm to Glass cocktails. In Little Red Door, you've got these big, beautiful portraits of farmers they work with to create their flavors. Like this guy here, who fuses Asian and European citrus to get exquisite flavors. They make their own spirits, form their own drinks. And here we have a little spectrum. This is the walnut, the olive, the beetroot, and the creme fraiche. That is phenomenal. Woohoo! It has a beautiful flavor. So well balanced. OMG. It tastes like, um, like a fortified wine, like a sherry spritz, but all up. Here we have the olive. If someone said to me, would you like a olive tasting sort of gin and tonic type drink, I'd be like, no. But that is really nice. Oh yeah. What a strong actually. Ooh. Quick fire is the beetroot. It looks viscous. Oh my God. It is an agrody vibe. It's not a very sweet one. It's a, uh, it's like, and this is the strongest. Oh, that is good. Gives you like that early door shudder and then nice bit of sweetness comes in and just sort of, you know, just oozes you. Oozes you? Soothes you. Ha <laughs> ha! I cannot name you another cocktail bar, which at 5 p.m. has half the vibe of that place. Incredible. Beautiful big smiles, great service, very innovative cocktails. And um, they're strong as well. Everyone knows that Paris is one of the most beautiful cities in the world, but why? There was a great renovation of Paris in like, the mid 1800s. An architect called Hausmann was tasked with completely redesigning all of Paris and creating that beautiful look. And every single street you look down has to have the same lines, the balconies, and a beautiful framed view at the end. So when you look down these Parisian streets and you see, oh, a church or another little beautiful building, that is all Hausmann. This cool little joint on a beautiful street is Sherry Bar, a sensual and sultry cocktail bar which dedicates itself to Japan and Japanese whiskey. And what do you want after a really rainy day when you have a beautiful blue evening? Oh, is it a dark whiskey bar? It's a moody dark bar. What you want for, bro? We don't know. We just asked the three very different but very delicious cocktails. Sherry Bar, a very committed cocktail bar, They're making all their own ingredients, like the cocoa lassi, their own vanilla syrup with pisco, lassi cocoa. Yeah. In here you got gin, pear, green matcha, lemon, bread of tonka bean syrup. I've never heard about that before. That's complex, refreshing. Yeah, I'm into it, Will. Should we eat this? Good. <laughs> Great to meet you. Thank you very much for that. It's fantastic. Thank you very much. Thanks. I'm so drunk, yeah. I think I've just been drinking a lot more than you guys, because... <laughs> okay, I really love that. Those cocktails were... <laughs> delicious. <laughs> Not sure what that was all about. I'm less fizzy than I was about half an hour ago. Terra Bar Van. Now, I'm super excited about this place. I came here in October with Tori. We actually ate there at 404, and here in one sitting because we didn't really know which one to choose, and this one was so much better. Terra Bar Van probably gave me my best meal of 2021. Yeah, yeah, I love it, I love it. Terra is another French restaurant 
like big fish, big sharing plates, very meaty. This is its newer, cooler, younger brother. What I really love is I walk back in six months later and everybody's the same, and I'm like, yes, this is exactly what I wanted. Oh, I love wine. Been to horseshoe bars before. This is a horseshoe open kitchen. You sit here, watch the guys work their magic. It is a wine bar, but it's a restaurant. I think if you came here and just drank wine, you're missing a trick. Food here is absolutely phenomenal. Peas, raspberry, bit of fromage blanc, pesto, and here are the beautiful carrots with an avocado and wasabi, like puree. Carrot that melts in your mouth, a bit of kick from the wasabi with the avocado. Have some of the peas, this is a dish brand new today. Like I said, they are changing it all the time. Oh man, fresh as hell. Peas are so next level, aren't they? Oh my God, they're so good. Something very powerful about a good pea. You have a veal dish and a lamb dish. They've made the sauces from the meat for both. The veal one, we've got capers, Brussels sprouts. It's going to be no less than amazing. <laughs> the price in this place is not expensive, but the food tastes way above its pay grade. This lamb is from the Alps, cooked right in front of us. Come on, fit. I just love this place. I'm not sure I've made that bleeding obvious. Another bit of veal with a Brussel. Oh, that's oh. They're small plates, but there's a lot on each one to share. And each plate is between eight and 12 euros, which for the quality of the food and the precision, like, is worth double. Really, at least. So good. I take back what I said earlier. <laughs> Going to Paris, they're gonna eat in one restaurant. Okay, I take it back. If I had to send anybody to one restaurant in Paris, it'd be here. Whoops, sorry. Love Jacobin, love it. But this is chocolate ganache with strawberries, rhubarb on like a crumbled base. Of course it's good, don't even answer. <laughs> oh, mate, that was delicioso. <laughs> I've, got, I've got a bit of an appetite for fondue, bro. Honestly, I can get real saucy with fondue. Guys, this is so cute! I love it! Look at this, even the bin bar is cool! You're here, finally! Please, please, please! Come and join! <laughs> I tell you what, you do not come across many stories like this one. Refuge de Fondue. This place has been here since 1966. And the couple, the husband and wife who now run it, lived around here. They've lived here all their life on this street. Refuge de Fondue was started by a woman called Janine. When England won the World Cup, but this is kind of more important. Maybe? And since 1966, this place has been doing one thing. That is fondue. And even the farms, the suppliers, are still the same guys from 1966. It's, uh, it's quite a young place. I quite like it. It's a complete mixed bag. The what? The what? The, the best place on earth. Yeah. Okay. I'm really excited for this. Yes. Yes. Oh my bloody god, man! Oh, I've got a gorge on it, man. The energy is quite lively. Uh, we're here for the later sitting. The earlier city, again, very high energy, very young crowd. Like, it feels cool. It's not for you pensioners. <laughs> Janine, the original owner, was like, hang on, I'm spilling way too much wine with people just climbing over tables. So she started serving the wine in baby bottles because they fall, jobs are good, and right, no spillage. And they just kept that going. Go on then, suck on the tea. Cheers, Chris. A lovely bottle of red. <laughs> it's a weird sensation, but I'm really, really into it. It's noisy, isn't it? What? Noisy. What for you, patience? I really like their energy at first. Now, yeah. now I'm finding it a little bit putrid. Like. No, I just want to murder them all. 
you've got to cook the potato in the oil first. <laughs> Name me a restaurant where this is acceptable. It is proper nice. In here, you have four cheeses. All local, not too far from Paris. Quatre fromage. What? Go hot. Hello, senor. Traditional genepe, which is a shop made from Savoie, which is where all the four mate, cheeses are no from, bro. Cares, the four no cheeses cares. are from Savoie, and so is the genepe. The genepe is strong. Yeah. Will was just telling me that we needed to pay to get out, get out quickly, and then 10 minutes later, we still gas it. Oh my God. <laughs> One more spot, Chris. Okay, this is a Le Comptoir General. A very cool, very large cocktail bar party plate. Will has finally got an order of a margarita. It's coming, Will. It's okay. You can, you can have some fresh air very soon. Yeah. There's like corridors, and there's cool, and there's albums on the wall, and there's lovely people smiling at you, taking your coat and stuff. It's a great place to finish tonight. It is a very nice place to finish off tonight. So if, like us, you're in Paris, you really fancy some fondue and a really good time, and also sucking on a baby bottle, which actually is a wonderful experience that I didn't know I missed, but I did, to Paris. The next day. <laughs> I think that was the shortest time I've spent in like a hotel room <laughs> for the night. Oh my God. Which got to bed at what, half one? Up at 6 a.m., off we go. So are we acknowledging that, that the outro for last night was a bit pants? Yeah. Quite loaded right now. Financially or source. <laughs> Not sure last night's outro was the best we've ever done. Oh, I'm so tired. <laughs> but given the circumstances, I think I think it was fair enough. Had some classic cocktails at Le Contoire General. My man. But Will, you scratched your margarita itch and you enjoyed that. Uh, and now we weren't lying, we are about to get back to that Eurostar, back to London for our 24 hour period on a wrap. <sighs> That's it. We were last in Paris in 2019, filming 48 hours in Paris, and that turned out to be quite a transformational film for us. It introduced us to a much bigger audience and really set us on the path for what Top Door is today. So it's been excellent to be back here exploring once again. It's snowing. Why is it snowing? It's no surprise, the highlight of mine yesterday was Terra Bar Van. Oh man, love that place. And Le Jacobin, and the coffee. I mean, it was all. Superb. I think we're going to get on the train, mate. Yeah? Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe. Uh, give us a like. Helps a lot. Feeds the algorithm. Love you, bless you. Good night. Good morning.